Let's make some socks on the Passive Knitting Machine. I'll be demonstrating a size six and a half ladies. Knitting socks on any double bed machine is basically the same process, but for these socks, we will use entirely Passive terminology and techniques. If you like these and want to make other sizes, my book, Sockinations, has done all the calculations for you for any knitting machine, really. So you can combine what you see in this movie with the numbers from that book and make sizes from infant to extra large adult. I will put the link in the program notes just in case you need that. I'm using a combination of two sock yarns, the stripes for the top, the solid color for the feet. Both of them are 75 percent wool and 25 percent polyamide. I really love this kind of sock yarn because it has a lot of stretch and resilience which is important for socks. The stretchy feature also gives it a somewhat unusual gauge. I knit a fairly tight fabric for socks and after resting, washing, and drying it's eight stitches ten rows per inch. Start out by bringing a span of 64 needles into work. Set them up so every other needle is in work on the back bed, every other needle is in work on the front bed. Leftmost needle should be on the front bed, rightmost needle should be on the back bed. Remember your edge clips, they are a big help. Use orange strippers. At a very small stitch size, I use one and a half, knit the zigzag row. Hang the comb and weights if you want them and you have them in that zigzag row. Change to CX, CX and nudge the stitch size up a little bit. The manual often tells you to use the very tightest stitch sizes that will work. I don't really like to do that for socks. Sometimes it's a little bit too tight to get your foot in and out without stressing the cast on. Now change to the ribbing stitch size. I use 4-4 in in and finish the cast on by knitting one more row. For a sock top five inches long above the heel shaping, knit 50 rows without changing any settings. Transfer all the stitches to the back bed from the front bed. Technically you may use either bed, but I find it's easier to do the work in this direction and doing it this way means we'll be knitting our heel on the front bed. When all of the stitches have been transferred, set the locks to N on the back bed, GX on the front bed, so that only the back bed will knit, and knit two rows. While these aren't absolutely essential to the pattern, I think it's a big help before turning the work to create the heel to have these rows because they get all the stitches facing the same direction. Use the stockinette stitch size. I succeeded with 5.1. After these, remove the comb if you used it because it's in the way of turning the work. However, it's still helpful to have some weights. My preference is heavy forks. Another option is heel grips if you were fortunate enough to be able to obtain some. On the section I'm going to actually lift and turn, I prefer a plain old claw weight because I want a little bit of weight to help prevent drop stitches, but not too much. Very carefully, using a multi-prong tool in this case, I will show you another way, lift 16, or in other words, one quarter of the stitches off at one edge of the work. Be very careful to make sure they actually seat on the tool prongs. Then twist the work and hang those same stitches on the front bed. Of course, the beds should be lowered to their lowest point for this. Don't rush through this process. It's wonderful to imagine you could do it with a flick of the wrist, and perhaps there's a super knitter somewhere who can, but I find it more worthwhile to take a little bit time of time over this because rehanging and catching a drop stitch is a real pain in the neck. Repeat the process with the 16 stitches or one quarter of the total stitches on the opposite side of the work. What I am using here is a multi-prong passive tool. It's actually set up for 18. I have two of them stuck. I wanted to get them out and couldn't, so I'll have to get Jack into the act for that. There also exist dedicated 
ones made to specific sizes. In case you do not have such a tool and cannot find one, they're not that easy to come by, you may also use a very slender circular hand knitting needle. Insert the tip of it into the 16 stitches on one edge of the work. I usually do it in two batches, as you see, then turn the work, rehang from the knitting needle, and it'll slide right out if you've picked a small enough one. I'm using El Cheapo from eBay stainless steel knitting needles for this purpose. This method is a little bit slower, but it does work fine. If you're going to change color for the foot, do it now and knit four circular rows. That's actually two complete rounds on the sock. In order to short row the heel, we need to put up a pusher under each of the front bed stitches and change to GX on the back and BX on the front. We won't use either of the arrow keys. Every time we lower a pusher, that needle goes into hold. This is the same thing that happens when you pull a needle all the way forward on a Japanese machine, but Passive just accomplishes it differently. So every row we need to lower one pusher on the side away from the locks. And after knitting across, we take the working yarn, lift it and wrap it into the hook of the next needle, the needle next to the last one that knitted. That creates a wrap so that we don't get holes in the heel. The rule of thumb is to short row down to approximately one third of the original number of stitches involved in the heel. In this case, that's 32 stitches. I am going to go a little bit past a third and short row down to 10. What this does is make the very narrowest part of the heel a little bit narrower and also creates more rows, which helps me and others who have a high instep. If your feet were shaped a little differently, you might choose to short row down to 12. Obviously, you can't short row down to exactly a third because that would be a fraction and we can't work with the fraction of a stitch. When we have 32 stitches, we can't divide them perfectly by three. So we come as close as we can in one direction or the other. After knitting the shortest row, for me, 10 stitches, we begin to short row out again, meaning the rows get longer in length. Doing that by returning a needle to work by placing the pusher that is under it up into the working position, about one centimeter above the rail. While we're short rowing, a pouch of knitting is growing in the center of the work. You may want to take your heel grips or heavy forks and move them around frequently, pulling that pat pouch downward. Passives do have um, strippers, which helps, but still that pocket of fabric can rise up and try to pop off the needles. Short rowing out is likely to feel a little bit stiff and hard to knit. That's because we're knitting off the wraps that we made, but they really are important to getting a neat heel. When the last of the stitches has gone back into work on each side, wrap the working yarn across the bed to the nearest needle. And this is another way to prevent holes right where the heel shaping starts. Now the pushers should go back into the rail and we will change back to CXCX to complete the circular part of the foot. This is between the heel and the toe and for size six and a half, it's 98 rows at this gauge. That'll sound long. That's because it's not truly 98 rows. It's 98 passes of the locks, but it's half that number of rounds down the foot of the sock. I'm going to show you a decreased toe. If you prefer, you may simply repeat exactly what was done for the heel. And when that is finished, scrap off and Kitchener stitch the toe. That's an absolute classic. Because some people really don't like short rowing, and because the decreased toe makes a really nice toe on a double bed machine, that's what I'm going to show you. 
I like to use the full fashion decrease for this with a two prong tool and on each side of each bed, move the two outer stitches in one needle space, then knit four rows on the counter. That's actually two rounds and keep on doing that until you get down to the same number as the narrowest heel row. You also have the option of changing up a little bit. I could have, if I wanted to, shape the heel as I did, going down to a 10 row width, 10 stitch width, sorry, but only decrease the toe down to 12. You can tweak this to fit the foot absolutely perfectly, but I'm just going down to 10, same as I did for the heel. After the last decrease, knit two rows, one round, so that there's only one stitch on each needle. Once you're at the tip of the toe, you could scrap off still in tubular knitting and Kitchener stitch the toe tip together. But for those who hate Kitchener, here's an alternate method. And transfer all the stitches from the front bed to the back bed and bind them off. Here I'm going to show you a version of the transfer bind off. There are lots of ways to accomplish this, this is the one that allows me to keep my fingers out of your view best. This does leave a little ridge at the tip of the toe, but it doesn't bother me or most wearers. We do have to seam the center back and weave in three tails, and that's it.